So tonight, uh, we're going to have an experiment in the, uh, in the lobby at the intermission, and it's going to revolve around the use of our senses. Um, as we all know, we developed our senses to help us navigate and interpret the world around us. But as a chef, what I found to be able to create a truly memorable dish was to be able to engage the five senses. So we have sight, that old axiom, we eat with our eyes, right? There's, there's uh, touch, the texture of the food upon the palate. There's sound, that satisfying crispiness crunch of a great potato chip. There's also taste, which is the sweetness of an apple pie. And then there's smell, you know, that aroma of a roasting chicken in the oven. Now, one of the great tools I have as a chef is be able to control and manipulate aroma. For we know that aroma comprises about 80% of what we can taste. But more importantly, aroma is a vital survival skill. There's a direct relationship between the sense of smell and memory. Without that memory, we would never be able to identify those foods that were beneficial even more importantly, those foods that were less than desirable. Some evolutionary biologists have suggested that women possess a greater sense of aroma recall. And this probably stems back to our days as a nomadic wanderers, when women were often the purveyors of new food into the diet. One can only assume that the men were out hunting. or watching TV. <laughs> Interestingly enough, um, it's been recently suggested that there's an inherent aspect of memory and, and smell and aroma, um, that it's embedded in our genes. This is called primal flavors. Think of the aspect of grilling meat. You have muscle grilling on open fire, fat dripping into those coals wafing and combining with smoke. And what it does is it provokes a, a, a physiological response of salivation and there's a hormonal response that drives anticipation and it drives hunger. But what's really fascinated me about aroma recently is because it's got this hardwired nature to our memory, is it has, an, has the opportunity to trigger memories. And as I get older, I find that aromas continually trigger more of my long-term memories. For example, I can be cooking at the stove and I'm browning butter. I add some lemon juice to it and I add some fine herbs. That aroma coming out of the pan is as caramelizations. It's the sweetness of the caramel. It's the vanilla. It's the sharp note of the citrus. It's that herbaceous nature of those herbs and I'm immediately transported back in time. I'm transported to a place called the Masonette in Cincinnati. I was a line cook there. And immediately, I'm surrounded by the controlled chaos that's going on around me. The heat and the sweat is on my face, and the chef is bellowing at me for yet another Dover Sole a la Meniere. Mm. Tonight, Tonight, we're going to provide you that opportunity to use that time machine. In the lobby, we have three identical tables, so no elbowing everybody out of the way. And on those tables, there's six jars. They're all numbered one through six. Each jar contains a different aroma. What I would like you to do is open the jar, pass it around your nose, and close the jar. Write your impressions down on this form or your memories, or what you think it is. If you're, we're interested in, after the intermission, about sharing some of these memories, so if you have a, prof a profound memory that you'd like to share, please give it to the volunteer at the table. And quickly work your way through, because this is going to be a groundbreaking experiment here. <laughs> what I would also um, want you to keep in mind is if you have trouble smelling, we call that sensory adaptation, that sometimes you get overwhelmed with smells. Think of that last Thanksgiving dinner. 
You're in the kitchen. You're surrounded by the smells of the day. You sit down, and you're just not hungry. It's not a hunger issue. It's an aroma issue. So on the tables, there's a small jar of freshly ground coffee. I want you to take that jar and take some great big deep breaths in that, and that'll reset your nose, and you can continue on with the tasting. That's a trick I learned from an old perfumer. So we're going to start intermission. We've got some light snacks out there for you. We have the ever-popular cash bar. I'll be elbowing you out of the way there. <laughs> um, and, of course, we've got the aroma experiment. Um, please come back. The intermission is 25 minutes. We are going to have four more dynamic speakers, and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.